This is an S-tier Mario Party character, but only in 20 turn games. And now that feels like a sentence that should never be said. I mean, Mario Party is basically just the world's most inefficient random number generator. There shouldn't be any talk of character tier lists, let alone ones that change depending on the game's length. And for most Mario Party games, that's true, the character you pick has no influence on the actual game. But, in 2018, Nintendo decided to take their perfect formula for a chaotic Mario Party game and, uh, well, make it work not so good anymore. In the game Super Mario Party, each character gets their own special die with a different distribution of numbers. And if you thought these extra dice would be fair and balanced, I guess again. And if you are already familiar with the disparity in Super Mario Party's extra dice, believe me, it's even worse than you think. This is a full statistical analysis of Super Mario Party's dice. Richard, hit that intro. This video was voted on by all my supporters on Patreon. If you want to help ensure that I can keep making videos like this for years to come, you can also get access to all sorts of cool perks like early access to every single video and exclusive bi-monthly live streams where I do all sorts of fun stuff. We did an entire playthrough of the super hard and chaotic Pokemon Emerald Redux randomized. Uh, we did crowd control of Mario Party where you got to literally play God. And later this week, I'm finally revealing the full lore behind the unfinished Editor Richard ARG that I did on this channel. So, if you're in a position to support and that sounds like fun, check the link in the description down below. Alright, now let's do an unreasonable amount of math about a game that's 99% luck. Now, I'm not the first person to try and find the statistically best character in Super Mario Party. It turns out that finding the expected value of each die is pretty simple. All you have to do is add up all the faces on each die together and then divide it by the total number of faces, in this case, 6. So if you did this with a normal die, you'd do 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 divided by 6 to find that the expected value for just a regular old standard die is 3.5. And you can do the same thing with every die in the game to find that Bowser has the highest expected value of 4.67. This means that given an infinite number of turns, you can expect to move 4.67 spaces a turn. But therein lies the problem. In Mario Party, you don't have an infinite number of turns. In Super Mario Party, games can be 10, 15, or 20 turns long. So, in a 10 turn game, there's a very real chance that Bowser rolls terribly most of the time. So, how do we account for this? Well, if we wanted to be perfectly accurate, we could try to find every single possible combination of rolls for each character for a 10, 15, and 20 turn game to see how often each character actually pops off. But running some quick math, that's a total of 69 quadrillion combinations that I'd have to find, which is a lot of work. So instead of doing that, I took the far simpler route of simulating 570,000 games of Mario Party. I promise this is easier. If we just write up some code that rolls a die with a given set of face values 10 times and adds them all together for a final result, we can simulate an entire game of Mario Party in an instant. Simulating one game isn't very helpful though. We could easily get an outlier that makes certain characters seem way better than they actually are. So, to make sure that we have a representative sample, let's simulate this game of Mario Party 10,000 times and find the average number of spaces moved. 
if we then do that for every single character, and again for 15 and 20 turn games, we should have all the information we need to definitively say which die is the best. However, before we can do that, we need to make some assumptions. First, we're going to assume that our goal is to move as far as possible. Generally speaking, the goal of Mario Party is to reach the star before your opponent does, so it stands to reason that a die that rolls higher will be better. True, there are certain circumstances where you might want to roll low. You might be close to the star, but don't have enough money, for instance. But those cases are pretty rare. I mean, I don't know. Maybe just keep a golden block on hand if you're that worried. Second, there are certain die with coin faces. If you roll one of these, you don't move any spaces, but you do gain or lose that many coins. For the sake of this simulation, we're just going to call all of these zero because you're not moving. But don't worry, we'll come back to these coins at the end. And lastly, something I haven't mentioned yet is that while each character has access to a special die, they don't have to use it. On any given turn, you can always opt to roll a regular six-sided die instead. So instead of simply finding the raw spaces moved, I've set up the simulation to calculate the percentage of times that each character's die outperformed the standard die. The higher the percentage, the better the die is. And if a die has a percentage less than 50%, that means that more often than not, you're better off not even bothering. So now all we need to do is simulate 30,000 games of Mario Party for all 19 dice for a total of 570,000 games. And it all took like Literally a couple of seconds. Computers are wild, man. If we simply output the data into a spreadsheet, we can start making some comparisons. Let's start by looking at the 10 turn games. Unsurprisingly, the best character in the game is still Bowser. And it's not even close. When you've got eight, nine, and 10 on your die, it doesn't really matter what the rest of it is. In a 10 turn game, Bowser's die will outperform a standard die 76.89% of the time, more than any other character in the game. Tied for second is Wario, beating a regular die 66.67% of the time, and Boo 65.76% of the time. And rounding off the top three is the iconic and beloved Mario character, the straight up standard die. Which, yes, means that of the 18 unique dice available in this game, 15 of them are straight up worse than a regular old die. On one hand, that's actually not a terrible thing. Like, you can technically pick any character you want and still be an A tier if you just never use their special die. But also, like, why even give them the special die then? You could have just given us, oh, I don't know, one more board, maybe? For those curious about the trash tier characters, if we scroll to the bottom, we find that Goomba is the third worst, beating a standard die 27.82% of the time, followed by Rosalina at 24.08%, and rounding off the list in a distant last place is Hammerbro, who outpaced a standard die and abysmal 5.27% of the time. I would say I hope none of you are thinking of trying to win with your favorite character, but let's be honest, nobody likes Hammer Bro. These are the tier list rankings for a 10 turn game, but that's only a third of the story. Going in, I wasn't really sure how much turn order would affect the rankings, and it turns out that for most characters, not that much. Higher win rates tended to grow as the turn rate increased, while lower win rate characters tended to do worse. And this makes sense. The more turns you add, the less likely you are to get extreme outliers. However, there were some characters that did see significant changes to their overall rankings in the tier list. Yoshi and Monty Mole tended to do a bit worse proportional to other characters in longer games. Yoshi specifically ranked 6th in a 10 turn game, but dropped all the way to 10th in a 20 turn game. 
And on the other hand, Luigi and Peach tended to do much better in longer games. Luigi ranks 14th in a 10 turn game, but jumps all the way up to 7th in a 20 turn game. I guess you just gotta give him a little bit more time to successfully do absolutely nothing. That being said, while there was some movement amongst the mid-tier characters, the top five remained exactly the same, regardless of turn length. If anything, our top three became more and more dominant as the games got longer. And the bottom tier also stayed the same, with nobody's favorite Hammer Bro dropping to just a 1.29% chance of beating a regular die in a 20 turn game. Let that sink in. In a 20 turn game, the odds of Hammer Bro moving farther than someone rolling a regular die is literally 1 in a hundred. But on the very off chance that there's some alien watching this video with completely foreign brain functions that leads them to absolutely loving Hammer Bro, don't worry, there's still a chance. We still need to talk about coins. Sure, Bowser might be absolutely schmoven, but you also have a 1 in 3 chance of not moving anywhere and losing 3 coins. And seeing as the goal of Mario Party is to buy stars, sure, you might get there no problem, but it doesn't actually matter if you're flat broke. So how do we account for this? Well, the first thing we need to do is figure out how many coins you can expect to gain or lose in a given game. To do that, we can take another expected value, but instead of spaces, we're going to keep track of how many coins you gain or lose from your dice in a given turn. If we then multiply that by the number of turns in a game, we can find out how many coins you can expect to gain or lose over the course of a whole game. And doing so reveals an entirely different story from the movement simulation. Before, Bowser was the undisputed king. But when you're losing an average of 20 coins in a 20 turn game, that's potentially an entire star you're missing out on. That is not insignificant. So now the question becomes, how do we combine the results from the movement simulation with the coin values to find the true best character in Super Mario Party? Well, to do that, we're gonna have to bust out an old favorite. That's right, I'm sneaking another Decision Matrix video in the last five minutes. Basically, what we need to do is standardize all of our data up to this point so it's on a scale from 1 to 10. Since all the movement was in percentages, that's pretty simple. We can just move the decimal point over a few spaces. And as for coins, since we've got some in the negatives and some positives, then we can simply shift our scale so it starts at zero and use the highest value divided by 10 to scale everything down proportionally. And then finally, we need to choose our weights. This is a percentage that measures how important each criteria is. This case is pretty simple because we only have two criteria, spaces moved and coins gained. Since this game gives you plenty of opportunities to gain coins in mini games and the abundant blue spaces, I'm going to say that moving a lot of spaces is more important than gaining coins, and weighs spaces moved at 70% and coins at just 30%. If you get to the star and don't have enough money, all I can say is skill issue. If you disagree with those weights, I have good news. I've included a link to the spreadsheet with all this data, as well as some fun graphs, in the description down below. If you just scroll on over to the end, you can change the weight for the spaces moved here. The weight for the coins will automatically update, and the sheet will recalculate everything for you. A higher weight means it's more important, going all the way up to 1 if you're a true Mario Party gamer who doesn't need these pity coins. I see you. But using my weights, what do we find? Well, for all you hammer broniacs out there, I have some terrible news, he still sucks. His literal only saving grace is a chance to get three coins. And even then, there are three characters that can easily make more money than him. But 
except when you do factor in coins, you'll find that there's a lot more movement than we first thought. Donkey Kong, Yoshi, Goomba, and Shy Guy are all here for a good time, not a long time. And once again, we find that Luigi has the largest jump in performance as the turn order gets longer. What can I say? The man's got stamina. And perhaps most shocking of all, while Bowser remains the undisputed king for 20 turn games, if you're not an absolute masochist and don't want to spend two hours of your life wanting to murder your friends, then King Koopa has actually been dethroned. In 10 and 15 turn games, it turns out that the true best character is none other than Donkey Kong. Sure, he may not move as far as the rest, but he also has the potential to make absolute bank significantly more than any other character in the game. Even this guy. If you're the type of person who values movement a bit more than coins, then you may want to opt for Diddy Kong. You can move about the same as a regular die while still making some good extra cash. And there you have it. Not only have we found the most accurate tier list of Mario Party to date, but we've also statistically proven that this game is fundamentally broken. Luigi can go all night long, and nobody, not even Nintendo, likes Hammer Bro. You dumb son of a bitch. And a massive thank you to all my patrons, including Alakazam, Aspa102, Big Dog Tie for the Win, Sidian, Gremlin the Goblin, Sherry and Mark, Starjoy, The Boss Killer 94, and Captain Kirby.